thank you and we praise you. We give you glory, give you honor and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, ask that you anoint the ears of the hearer to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here will hear this word accurately and they will hear it precisely and they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. Realize, Heavenly Father, the doers to get the result. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the admiration of that in Jesus' name. Red now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointing is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory and honor and praise. And I do, Father, ask you now that I will speak this word accurately, and I will speak it precisely, and I will speak it boldly and with authority. For I lives that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I do lives, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and it is the strength of my life. I pray it now, Father God, in this message, all of you and none of me, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted, unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I thank you, Father, your worship not be turned to you, boy, but it shall accomplish instead it would do. Also, Father God, thank you. You're the Lord thy God that cannot lie, and you confirm your word with signs following. And therefore, I declare that the signs shall follow in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles today to Matthew, the 10th chapter, and we're going to be dealing with the authority of the believer, the authority of the believer. Whether you know it, you are a believer, you've been given authority. God is not in control of this world system. He can only be in as much control as you allow him to work through you. So it's important you allow God to work through you. So many people looking for God to do something, and God has given us dominion. God has given us authority over the devil and all his names and all his viruses and everything that he brings forth in this earth. Amen? Praise God. Now look at Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 1. Praise God. And when he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave some power against unclean spirits. Now, you learned in our, our series before, unclean spirits are demonic demons, agents that are designed to come after you, to influence you, to go away from God. Amen? He said to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. See, well, I don't know about that, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I think I should just go to the doctor. Yeah, you should, because if you don't believe, you need to go to the doctor. And let me say something. You can believe and still go to the doctor. Sometimes you need a doctor to tell you what's wrong. And you know what? God works through doctors. Amen? Praise God. Glory to God. Now, look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Now, I want to show you. I hear so many people say, well, you know, that worked during Jesus' day. And I'm going to show you today it worked with Peter. It worked with the Apostle Paul. The, if God would have gave power just to Apostle Paul and Peter and other disciples, that means he would be a respecter person. And God said he's not a respecter a person. See, whether you know it or not, Satan's objective is to get you to, to, not to believe God. See, there's two forces in this earth. Even your sin issue. Believing will take care of all your sin issues. Because unbelief is the root of the sin. And the reason you sin is because you don't believe. You don't believe God sent you the Holy Spirit on the inside that's a capable, should I say it like, capable of overcoming every situation that's going on in your life right now. But the problem is this. We don't value the word. Christians don't value the, of the word. Oh, they want to talk about the word. They want to have arguments about the word, but they don't know the word. They talk about it. Some people can recite scriptures, but they don't know what they mean. Simply like this. They don't have a revelation. A revelation is something when something becomes so real to you. Like you get up in the morning, you, you should brush your teeth. And that become real natural. You're going to get up in the morning and brush your teeth. For some reason, if you automatically forget, you realize, I didn't brush my teeth. Why? Because that's been programmed into you. It's like an automatic thing. And that's what God, God wants to work his word through you automatically. You are somebody. You are a king's kid. You are royalty. You've been given dominion and authority over the devil and all his viruses. Amen? Praise God. Now, Galatians 2, verse 20. Watch this. Paul told, he said, I am crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless I live. Now notice, Christ died on the cross, but you was crucified. What that simply means is this. 
Father, as God is concerned, your flesh is dead. Father, the spiritual thing, it's dead. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live inside of a physical body. See, God want to work through your spirit. <coughs> but if you don't <coughs> understand spiritual things and trying to understand it naturally, the Bible said the natural man received not the things of God. It said they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, nor can he even understand them. Praise, let's go back to that scripture now. So he said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. He said, I live still, I still live. What did my spirit man live? Because the spirit man is the real you, not this body. Yet not I, but Christ liveth where? In me. Now notice he said, Christ, that word Christ means crystal, which means the anointed one and his anointed lives in, in you. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Now notice, you living the life in the flesh. Okay? When you go somewhere, you drive your car, you in the car, but the car ain't you. You're taking the car where you want it to go. So many people turn around, I ask them sometimes, uh, do your car take you where you want to go? Yeah, my car take me. No, you take the car where you want to go. The car don't, you understand? <laughs> That's how we've been programmed. Let's go back to that. Praise God. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, this is how we're supposed to be. We live by the faith of the Son of God. We live by his faith. When you got born again, Christ Jesus imparted his faith on the inside of you. You have the same faith that Jesus had when he walked the earth. You have been given dominion and authority just like Jesus. The Bible even talks about in 1 John, uh, I think it's 4, 17. It says, as he is in this world, so are we, and so are you. Amen. Let me finish that one off. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, but Christ living in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who what? Loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for you. He gave himself so you could have dominion and authority in sir. But so many Christians, we're so caught up in religion. We're so caught up in emotions. And there's nothing wrong using your emotions for God. But you know, your emotions should never override the word. See, if you, if, if you go by your emotion, you can miss God. You can feel something, and it can feel good, but don't, don't mean you're supposed to do it just because it feels good. See, God does not work the feeling realm. God speaks to you by your spirit. Now, he can speak to your spirit and your mind, but understand, both of them should really be in an agreement. Amen? Praise God. Now, hallelujah. Glory to God. Slow down, Robert. I'm talking to me. Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8. Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8. Hallelujah. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Hello? Raise the dead. Cast out demons or devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, <coughs> the first thing you have to learn how to do is, and it was, well, how to operate in your authority, you got to receive what God said about a situation. If God said you can heal the sick, you got to believe it and then receive it. See, some people don't receive. The Bible says what things ever you desire, when you pray, believe, that you receive them, and then you should have them. Amen? So think about it. You've been given authority. You, you are a powerful being that's walking this earth, and Satan don't want you to know it. Now, praise God. i got to continue on with the message, and I hope this part of the message is a blessing to you. You can go to www.faithlove.org or robertcorporalministry.org. Amen? We love you. God bless you. Praise God. Turn your Bibles to Luke, the 10th chapter. Luke, the 10th chapter. Verse 10. Luke, the 10th chapter. Verse 19. Luke 10, 19. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Behold, I've given you the power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemies. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now think about this a minute. He's giving you a power and dominion and authority over the enemy. He's giving you that. Now, let me ask you a question. You a believer, why would you not use the power that God's giving you? Satan is after your power because he has none. So what he's tried to do is to trick you in the saying things that are contrary to God's word so they can come to pass. I think we learned in our demon series, fear is perverted faith. Fear works the same way as faith, but both of them work. You're in a system where both work. And what happened, Adam had faith, but when Adam could have committed treason in the garden, Satan entered him, and faith became now perverted. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. I say amen to me. Glory to God. Now, I want to read Luke 10, 19 in the Amplified. Luke 10, 19 in the Amplified. Glory to God. Behold, I've given you the authority and the power to tramp upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength ability over all the power that the enemy possessed. And nothing shall by any means harm you. See, you got to believe that. See, in your life, when you're given authority, uh, somebody give you a negative report. You say, oh, no, not me. That's not happening to me. Well, you might get the coronavirus. Oh, no, no, oh, no. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. See, all, 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 all those things are really curses, whether people know it or not. And Satan is trying to, trying to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his object. Satan, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and you might have more, more abundantly. Amen. He, as a matter of fact, the Amplified reads to the full, to it overflows. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Now. Mark 11. And we're going to look at verse 15, I think it is. Mark 11. 15. Is it Mark 11? Uh, I'm sorry, Mark 16, verse 15. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is after Jesus had rose. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, that word gospel, we know it's good news, but it also means the gospel of grace. Amen. Praise God. Go back to that one, please. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. Praise God. The next, next verse. Huh? Oh, I didn't. I didn't read 15. Okay. He that believe is baptized shall be saved, and he that believe it not shall be damned. Next verse. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, notice, nothing's going to happen unless you believe. See, your authority is based on believing God. If you don't believe, it won't work. Some people, I say something sometimes, they say, well, I don't believe it. That's it. It won't never work for you. I said, but it works for me. Let's go on. Back. Praise God. And he, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils or demons, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, just want to cover a little something about tongues. Okay? It's a gift that God has given and it's available for every Christian that want to receive it. Some people say everybody's not supposed to have it. Oh, everybody can have it, but everybody's not going to receive it. I'll say it again. Everybody can have it, but everybody's not going to receive it. 
Amen. Praise God. Now, next verse. Go say something now, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18, amen? And they shall take up serpent if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall do what? And they shall recover. Now, if I lay hands on somebody, first of all, you got to realize something. It's not your power. It's God's power. I remember many times that God used me to supernaturally grow out legs. And I remember one time I, he said something to me about it. And somebody had back, back problems. He said something to me about it. And one time I'm sitting there and uh, I'm going to struggle like it's going in my head. Suppose this don't work. And the Spirit of God said to me, you got to remember something. You ain't growing the legs out. It's me. See, see you got to be careful that when something happens, you don't get caught up that you're the one that's doing the results. You got to realize it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it, not you. See, once you get over to you, it ain't going to work. You get over to him, it'll work. Amen? See, God want to take you out of yourself. Amen? Praise God. Next verse. So then afterward, the Lord has spoken unto them. What did the Lord? He spoke unto them. He was received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. Next verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. What did they do? <coughs> they went forth and preached everywhere. I'm just asking the internet or just to think about that. That's all. And the Lord was working what? With them. Who was working with them? The Lord was working with them. And what was the Lord doing? And confirming the word with signs will follow. Si understand, ladies and gentlemen, signs don't come before the word. You heard what I said to you? The word comes first, then the signs. Amen. No matter whatever, if you got a sign or something, believe it or not, there was some word that took place there. No matter what. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. I've called you for such a time as this, said the Lord. I've called you to use your authority and the dominion that I have given you. For I desire to do great, great and mighty things to you. It is there. My power is there. Trust me, rely on me, and I'll cause great things to come into your life, great things for your family, great things on your job, great things everywhere. For I'm the Lord God, I did it once, and I'll do it again, and I'll keep on doing it. Don't let the situation, the circumstances of a virus uh, to cause doubt and fear to come into your life. Rely on me and trust me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. That's going to stay in the message, too. <laughs> Sometimes you want to take stuff out. Sometimes it ain't good to take stuff out. Sometimes people need to hear stuff. Sometimes we don't want to hear it on TV because we're not, everybody hearing it on the internet, so they might as well hear the rest of it. Amen. You know, let me say something to you. Listen to this. And there was a time that, you know, I thought that way. Thank God for growth. Thank God for growth. Thank God for being able to be transparent and let people know, hey, you know, we didn't get into this, come out packaged, and we, we knew it all. We grew. We, we stayed in the Word, and we grew. And some things we found out we might have not been doing exactly the right way, but you know what? That's what the Holy Spirit is there for, to help you to grow. Amen? I, 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 I get along with a pastor say he don't never have no issues, no problem. He got, he, he got it all together. Oh, no. <laughs> None of us got it together. Amen? Praise God. Now, what did I just have you do? Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And right away, those that you heard that message, you can read about that in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the gifts of the Spirit. What happens is that I spoke in tongues, I had the gift of tongues, and then interpretation came back through me. That's not the same as praying in tongues to your Father. There's two types of 
administration that goes on with that. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, what did I tell you? Matthew 28, not verse 1. But you did good. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 18. Yeah, 18. And Jesus came and spanked unto them, saying, All power is given unto, you, given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go to the next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something right now. If he's always with you to the end of the earth, he's with you. You, you don't have to go and get God. God's in you. Okay? That's the reason a lot of times I, I can't sing the song, Passing Not a Gentle Savior. Passing Not a Gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Why are those others I call? Do not pass me by. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. So if you like the song, change the words. Amen? See, because you're, 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 you're not communicating with God. You're looking to God as he's up there and he's in you. Amen? In the form of the Holy Spirit. He's there. Amen? That's how he communicates on the earth, in the form of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. Now, wow. Yeah, Acts 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. I think that was on. Watch this. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be a witness unto both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now notice, he's telling the disciples they was waiting that they, they, they would receive power. Now we know the story in the upper room, they were all sitting there praising God. And they all got filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Men heard them speaking in their different languages. Now go to Acts, because um, people are saying something. Well, Jesus did miracles. I'm going to show you that Peter did miracles. Now think about this. Peter is the one that denied Jesus three times. And he was walking around the earth doing miracles. And God still used him, even though he denied him. Amen. Give you something to think about. Acts 3, verse 1. We're going to go on down to verse 14. Wow. Church, you got to use your authority. You got to start speaking the situations that's going on. Sometimes there are situations that, that come up and and we think things that might not even come to pass. I should put it like this. When you think it, it's really nothing. Until you start taking it. And receiving it. Amen. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple of the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. Verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gates of the temple, which is called beautiful, to the arms of them that entered into the temple. Next verse. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and ask of alms, so offerings, let's go on. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Watch that. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Now, understand, this man was expecting to receive something. Watch verse 6. So you got to have your expectancy to receive from God. You don't expect to receive nothing. You ain't getting nothing. 
Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee. See, see, the man didn't need silver and gold. He needed something else. Watch. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now notice, he didn't use his authority. He used the authority of the name of Jesus. That's a name above every name. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Immediately, his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Next very thing. And he leaping up and stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping. And what was he doing? And praising God. Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was was he was set for the arms at the beautiful gates of the temple. And they were filled with wonders and amazement at that which had happened unto him. It was filled with wonders and amazement. Verse 11. And he asked the lame man which was healed, held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, great wondering. Verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he gave unto the people, ye men of Israel, thy marvel at you, why you look at this so earnest on us as though by our own power. Now notice here, he says, by, it's not by our power, by our own power, holy, we have made this man whole. We, we didn't really do it. Just like you've been given authority. You're, you're the one supposed to lay hands on the sick. <coughs> God needs a vessel in the earth to be used so he can operate. He operates through men. Amen? Are you willing to be that vessel? Amen? Verse 13. And God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our Father, have given glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Now, notice about Pilate wanted to let Jesus go. But the religious folks want to kill him. See, see, religion is a killer. Religion think pe pe people that in the religion, they think they're doing something for God, they're really not doing nothing. But Satan convinced them they're doing something. Let's go on to the next verse. But ye deny the Holy One and the just desire the murder to be granted unto you. They chose a the murderer. But see, Jesus came to die. He came to die for you and I, that we may have this authority and dominion in the earth. I'm going to tell you, it works. Amen. Praise God. James chapter 4, verse 7. Now, I've heard, I've seen this scripture. <laughs> James 4, verse 7. People have said, resist the devil, he flee. No, he won't. See, they lifted something out of context in the Bible. They just lifted something out and said, resist the devil's fleet. Now, you don't just resist the devil's fleet. Watch this. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Submit yourself to God and his word. And then you're able to resist the devil and then the devil will flee. See, if you're not submitted to God's word, the devil the devil's not going to flee because you're not submitted to the word. You're just copying what somebody else did. I think we learned in our demon series where the, the guy tried to cast out demons, but he didn't have authority to do that. The, the, the demons said, we know, we know Jesus. We know Paul, because he got the authority of Jesus. But who are you? And all the demons jumped on him. Amen? Praise God. Now, Isaiah 54, verse 17.
Well, I'm putting a lot in the scriptures in this, ain't it? Is that there? Yeah, I want to do all three of them. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that's the form of this dish shall prosper. Now, viruses, those things are, are, are weapons, shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. Now, I want to say this to you. I know some associate ministers, persons I know, they, they, got, they got symptoms of the coronavirus, but they came through. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily you might not, you, you can get attacked. Whatever the reason is, maybe sometimes we do something wrong. Hey, we're, we're in this earth, in this earth, and things, things do happen. But no matter what, let me say this to you. If I'm going down, I want to go down with the word. That's the way you ought to look at it. You're going to go down with the word. Let me ask you a question. If you get some symptoms, why not spend time saying what the word say, then talking about your problem? You may say that, Lord. Be careful that all your talk is not about the coronavirus. Be careful. Because you could, you could be building on that. I mean, do what you got to do. Like they say, wash your hands and, you know, all the things they tell you to do. Go ahead and do them. But don't walk around in fear, spooky. You know, it might jump on me. <laughs> You know, cast that stuff down. Even that thinking, you know. I wonder if the person standing six for me. I wonder if they got it, you know. <laughs> no, no. Don't, let, don't entertain that stuff. Cast that stuff down. Look at the uh, New Living Translation in that verse. And people try to say things. Somebody uh, said on me, they hope I catch the coronavirus. <laughs> Am I going to be moved by that? I just, not, not here. See, you got to realize, as Christians, you're going to have haters. And the devil going to use people to hate you because he don't like you. He don't like your authority. He don't like your dominion. He don't like what you stand for. You are, especially when you become a threat to him. See, he, if you're not a threat to the devil, you ain't doing nothing with your authority. He, he ain't going to bother you. Don't worry about him. He ain't too much. Because he, he, he got you going the way he wants. He don't have to bother you. New Living Translation. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice, raise up, accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord, and their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Think of, he said, he's going to vindicate you. See, people say stuff about you and, and, and things like, you're going to vindicate. It's going to be made to be made wrong. Look at the message translation. I think that's the one I want, too. Yeah, I, I go through them all because they're all good. <laughs> message translation. Is that, that's not all that, is it? Okay. But there's no weapon that can hurt you or ever been forged. Go to the uh, Amplified, the AMC the one, AMPC. Yeah. But no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to me made wrong. This peace, notice this peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, the, the those whom ideal servants of the Lord reproduce. This is the righteousness of vindication which they obtain from me. This is that which I imparted to them as their justification, said the Lord. Now, notice that word in the opposition. Opposition. My day, I tell I say this, I declare I come overcome every opposition that comes my way this day. I declare it. I overcome every opposition. You ought to be clear. 
I overcome every ob no matter whatever's going on, I overcome it. This thing's happening sometime on my job that I do, and they, they look at me like, you know, you, you thought of that like that. Man, that's God, man, ain't me. That's God. All of a sudden, I, I get an answer like that. Bing! Just like that. Because I declare I overcome every opposition. And no matter what, this opposition is going to come everybody's way. And I should use my authority to say what I desire to overcome. I don't want to wait and turn around and say, when it, the opposition is there, and say I overcome this opposition. I want to say I overcome opposition all the time. So when that one comes up, I said, I already overcome this opposition. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do in the areas of believing. Now look at first, um, first John chapter 4, verse 17. See, the only, only thing, that stop, something that will stop your authority is fear. What did I tell you? First John chapter 4, verse 17. I'm looking in my Bible, too. Praise God. And I said this early. Daring is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. See, see boldness comes from spending time in the Word, spending time with God. Boldness is not going to come just sitting around and entertain everything that the world has to offer. Have boldness in the day of judgment. Because, as he is talking about Jesus, so are we <coughs> in this world. So are we in this world. So are we, excuse me, so are we in this world. So whether you know it or not, is Jesus poor? No. Is Jesus sick? No. So guess what? The Bible says, by his stripes ye were healed. You are the healed the same trying to make sick. See, you heal spiritually. You may have something going in your physical body, but you need to use the authority to talk to your body to say what you want. What you're trying to do is you're trying to change the physical condition by speaking the word. Jesus said, my word is a spirit. And my words are what? They're life. My words are spirit, and my words are life. Now, look at the... Uh, First Peter 5, 7. And that's the one I'm going to close on. Oh, yeah. I think... Mm. There's another scripture I want to go to. Praise God. I'll let you know in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. First Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Look at that in Amplified now. God cares for you. So all you're concerned, you're supposed to roll over on God, give them to him. So you, you're not equipped to handle them. You, you handle it with the word. Casting all the whole of your care, all your anxieties, you worry not, give, give them to God. All of your worries, all of your concern, once and for all, on him. Why? Because he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Now, look at um, Proverbs 4. Verse 20. I want to show you something so that you can really realize that the word of God is designed to take care of every issue of your life, every single issue. But you've got to believe the word. Israel, they roamed around the wilderness because of their unbelief. Matter of fact, it says, it says they limit the Holy One of Israel. That's in Psalm 78. They limit the Holy One of Israel because of unbelief. See, so you're either going to have belief or unbelief. You're going to either believe the world or you're going to believe God. The choice is up to you. Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. 
Let them not depart from thy eyes. Yes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. You know, keep the word in, in you. He's trying to keep the word in you. So your authority, your word, keep the word in you. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find. You're going to believe those things. Everybody is a product of what they heard. That's why Jesus said, take heed to what you hear. Guard your ears, protect your ear gates, and your eye gates will go through your ears. See, people say, well, I'm my own person. Everybody individually, God has, should I say, predestined a man to do certain things, but understand, realize, realize this, ladies and gentlemen. You can determine your character based on the information you put on the inside of you. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And whatever goes in you will come out. So if you got things going in you that's contrary to God's word, that's what's going to come out of you. If you got God's words on the inside, that's what will come. And guess what? You got God's word, your authority is going to come on out on the out on you. You're going to speak the word. But if that's not there, that's not going to happen. Or you might attempt to speak it because you heard it, but you ain't spend no time with the one that has the power. See, your relationship with God is so important. We got to practice the presence. He said, look, okay. When a doctor goes to school to become a medical doctor, he starts his what? What do he start? He starts his practice. Well, when you get born again in the word, you start your practice. And as you practice in the word, you become better. You become more efficient. You become more tuned into God's voice. Why? You practice in the present. Matter of fact, there's things I'm sure the doctor in the beginning, he thought better ways of doing things. He went to school. He was trained on it. But when you get into practice, you see things, certain things. You might do a little bit different. I heard a situation of a guy that he was, he was a doctor filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said a procedure was normally to do it this way. And the Holy Spirit said to him, if you do it that way, that's the procedure, he'll die. Do it this way. He says it's not the norm, but did it. He did it God's way, and the man lived. Now, who's the chief surgeon? Jesus Christ. He's the chief surgeon. So you want to believe the chief surgeon. That's what the Bible tells us. We walk by faith, not by sight, not based on what our physical senses tell us. We walk by faith. We walk by the Son of God's faith that lives on the inside of us. Amen. Praise God. I praise God that you were blessed today. I encourage you to go back over this message. See, just hearing it once is not going to get it for you. You got to hear it more than once. That's the problem. Everything you've done in your life, you heard, heard it more than once. Amen. Well, guess what? It's an opportunity now for you to sow into God's kingdom. We don't tell you what to give. Only thing I tell the Bible said, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Now, you might be sitting home in your living room and say, well, you know, I want to worship God. Giving is worship. Giving is the, is the highest form of worship. See, if you can't be trusted with money, with God, how can you trust you with anything else? See, because money is close to you. And the Bible says, giving it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. See, just like people sow in the stock market. You might be saying, well, I don't have no return to the stock market. Why? You didn't sow nothing into it. See, everything in this earth is seed time and harvest principle. God loves the cheerful gift. He wants you to give cheerfully. If you're going to give grudgingly, just, just keep it. But it's an opportunity for you to sow into God's kingdom. Now, what I'd like you to do is you do what God tells you to do. Click on give. You it'll take your credit card. Or you can also, you can also mail it, if you like to P.O. Box 200-491, Newark, New Jersey, 07102. Amen. Glory to God. So praise God. Praise God. Now, Father, we thank you that the people are givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you're sitting there watching. You, man, you, you might be sitting there saying, man, this is about the, like almost the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. When I first heard the word, I thought the same thing until I got in it. You know, there's people that are doing things like technology. 
uh, years ago when I started in the computer field, years ago. And uh, we were talking about, at that time, this was back 1979, that there would be phones that was cordless. And people said, y'all gotta be crazy. There wouldn't be no wires. And I thought it was crazy in the beginning too, but I started to really look at what was going on with the computer industry and things changed. You know, and at that time, I did never forget, we used to have uh, computers, they were big, gigantic storage room, they had, had all this air conditioning to keep them cool so they didn't go hot. Now they got everything in something little, like little tiny thing, you know. It's amazing, but see, that's progress. The Bible said in the last days, man would excel in knowledge, and he is. And there's nothing wrong with to get knowledge, but let that knowledge go over God's words because you know what, you need the wisdom of God to use the knowledge. So I just tell you, do what God wants you to do, tell you to do. Now, give you the opportunity now to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. I repeated something. That's all right, praise God. And to make him look Lord of your life. So you could be sitting there, Pastor, I don't know whether I'd have died or whether I'm going to heaven or hell. Or you might say, I don't believe there's a hell. Well, you know what? If you go to, if you die and you don't know Jesus, that's where you're going to go. And you could believe that or you don't. So you got to believe in order to go to heaven. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You got to believe he died for me, and you got to receive his forgiveness that he's already provided. So I like to make it very simple for you. Repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me, and on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Whether you know it or not, you just said that the angels of heaven are rejoicing over you. You are a king's kid. You are royalty. You are somebody. Amen? Praise God. Welcome into the family, God. If we can be assistance at all to you, you can call our church number 973-577-7084, and we'll try to help you get some information. Also, try to help you get into a local church that's going to help you in your new story. Amen? And then, like I told you, for the angels to rejoice in heaven over you. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Now to him is able to keep you from falling and prevent you faultless. Go in peace, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.